Hey everybody, it's Jared with Wonderfully Wander here. Today, gotta deal with Beast a little bit. So I have a 2018 F350 diesel and I've done a couple of videos. I did a video showing you guys how to replace the APIM. Uh, now today I'm dealing with something a little bit different. So please join along with me today as I take you through on my fix of something that's a little uncommon, but uh, maybe it'll help some of you guys out there. The issue that I have been experiencing is a crank no start on this 2018 with a 6.7 uh, turbo diesel. And what I have done so far, I was I had the batteries dropped out and uh, I ended up having to get new batteries. So these are brand new batteries. I have new batteries on both sides and I cleaned them up and I put this little anti-corrosion spray from NOCO uh, to help. These are lead acid batteries and they uh, have a bad habit of venting sulfuric acid and they corrode all the metal that's around there. So I've got those taken care of hoping that that would be my issue because sometimes trucks do weird things when batteries go low. Uh, that did not fix my problem. I still had an crank no start. Next up, this guy right here is my one of my fuel filters. So uh, those are supposed to be changed about every 15 to 20,000 miles, something like that. Um, and I last changed them about 20,000 miles ago. So, uh, you know, I figured we'd do that. Here's the other filter. The other filter is down here, right there. That little yellow cap, that's the, the filter that's mounted on the frame rail. So I replaced those two things. And then once you replace your filters, you have to prime them back up full of diesel before you try and start. So I turned the truck battery on and I waited for my pump to kick on. There's a high pressure pump in here in the engine bay. There's a lifting pump inside the fuel tank that's called the pump sending unit. And uh, I was thinking that that might be wrong or broken or not working or whatever. Now, the problem that I have with this no crank no start is it's it's been totally random. And I took it into the shop and of course, as soon as I got it into the shop, the uh, owner of the shop said, I'm sorry, I can't do anything for you until you figure out what's going on. And so I think I finally figured out what's going on. So back under here, is my fuse box and if you open up this fuse box this truck see this standard box fuse here is a 30 I, I uh, tried to take the fuse cap off and it uh, it broke the cap off so I need to replace that fuse but that fuse is responsible for my fuel pump that lifter pump that I was talking about um, now the problem is is Ford in their infinite wisdom did not add an external serviceable like that guy an external serviceable relay for whatever reason I have no idea I don't know why they did that that's that's something for sure so underneath this is another relay that's non serviceable and Apparently these trucks get hot and they melt a wire that destroys that relay So what we're going to attempt today is I'm going to buy an external 40 amp relay I'm going to wire it up probably up to here So I'll, I'll this is for my uh, Horn blasters train horn set. I'll probably tie into this. This is just the remote wire that tells the rig Hey, there's power turn the pump on um, So I'll get my remote power from here I have to pull the wire out of the harness out of that fuse and uh, then I get power from here and I can ground into the frame that should be it and if I do that and the pump turns back on then I know it was a relay first step that we have here is I'm gonna take this air filter and get it out of the way there's the air filter box you just loosen up a screw right here pull this out you have to unclip this one 
this guy. You just pull back on this red piece, press this button, pull it out. And then there's a couple of bolts here and I'll take this out. That'll give me access to the fuse panel. One eternity later. Holy cow, that was, that was not so fun. Okay, so this is only held in by one 10 millimeter bolt. And then back here, there's a clip that clips in that holds it to the bottom. However, my truck has had a rebuilt motor and I think the technician that put it back together, this main line trunk here that goes into the fuse panel, they zip tied this box to it. So I had to find all the zip ties, get everything pulled apart. Wow, that was, it should just be, take that bolt off, lift the plate up, pull it back out toward you and it's disengaged and then you kind of have to lever it forward like I have it. So if you see here, boom, culprit. These wires get hot to the fuel pump for whatever reason. That is confirmation enough to me that I need to bypass this. That wire right there, the purple and green, you can see that it's a little bit bigger gauge than the other ones. Apparently they need to step it up even more because it's not enough, it's melting that pin. Okay, here's the diagram. So if you look on the bottom of this, you can see 30, 85, 86, and 87A. So if you have a five wire relay, you're gonna have 87 and an 87A. The 87A will be the fifth one. You can just wrap that wire up and disregard that wire, you don't need it. If you got a four pin like I did, um, so this is labeled 87A. Uh, so you're gonna take this pin for 85, is gonna go to a grounding point. Pin for 87 is gonna tie into that purple and green wire that we cut to go to the fuel pump. That's the one that got hot and burned out the relay. 86 is going to be into the fuse box. That's We're going to tie on to a signal wire that I have existing. I have a horn blasters kit that I already have a signal wire for. So we're going to share that wire. This last one, 30, that's going to be your power. So for me, if you're going to do a ground, you need your ground to be at least, if I'm using 10 gauge for the power, you have to have at least... 12 gauge for the ground. I'm going to go 10 gauge for the battery, 10 gauge for the ground, and 10 gauge for this. So it's all no worries. And then for the signal wire, you could use something like a 16 gauge, a little small wire. It doesn't need much. It just needs to say, um, we have power on, and then it turns everything else on. That's what allows this to turn on and let the power flow through. Don't forget your 30 amp fuse. Try and put that as close to the battery as you can. Here are the materials that I'm going to use in order to get this done. I have a 10 gauge wire um, and I realized once I got here that I grabbed black. I intended to grab red but I grabbed black. The color doesn't really matter, it just kind of helps designate what's power and what's ground. If you get red wire you can always take a, a black permanent marker or this electrical tape and kind of tape around it and designate it as a ground, but I'm not going to go back to the store. So black 10 gauge wire, I've got some 16 gauge wire for the signal wire, I've got electrical tape, here's some heat shrink, the relay, 30 amp fuses for my inline fuse, I have a, I don't like crimp fittings, I like to solder and heat shrink. So here's my solder iron, my solder. The solder that I'm using is electrical rosin core, and I think it's a 60-40. I can't, uh, let's see, yeah there it is, 40% tin, 60% lead. I have this 30 amp box fuse for the one that I broke. These pins are for the bottom of this, and these are for... Uh, battery terminals and ground connectors and that kind of stuff. So that's what we should need for the project. Here's another view of that purple green wire. I put just a little piece of shrink tube on that wire just to make it sure it doesn't connect to anything or short on anything. But there's another view of just how bad that pin connector smoked out. 
and again we're talking about this fuse right here without the cap the underside of that you can see the relay box that my wrist is on right there that relay is bad inside there so that's why we're doing this whole thing the way I like to get these connections put together is I'll take a lighter and soften up that yellow sleeve and then I'm gonna solder this directly onto that copper wire and then I'll take some heat shrink tube and put it over top of the entire connector so that not even the connector is exposed. Here's the wire after soldering. Here's that connection after I put a little bit of heat shrink on it. So now I'll be able to plug that in with no worries of it touching anything but what it's supposed to. Dab a little bit of dielectric grease on there and that connection is going to be great. Now that we're a little bit back together, let's talk about this diagram that I drew up earlier. So you see here, wire 86 is the trigger signal wire. That's this wire here that goes into a split and that's uh, this is the wire that has constant power when you turn the key on. This will send a signal to the relay when the power gets turned on the truck. The relay will get the power from here. There's my 30 amp fuse and the power is right here, number 30. We have 85 is the ground and we have 87 goes here and down back into that purple and green line and that comes out from underneath the fuse box. So that's where this plug was in the back under here, I cut that wire and then fed it back underneath the box. Now all I have left to do is put everything back together and let's see if the relay works. Batteries hooked up, everything's plugged in, air box is back together, batteries back in, fuse box back together, there's our new relay. Remember when you're putting your air box back on, to plug that guy back in and to connect it to the back side of the air box. Now, uh, because I had empty fuel filters over here and on the rail, we're going to go under the truck. And if the truck turns on and it starts filling, then we fixed it. All right, here we go. Go ahead and turn on. Oh, I hear it. Woohoo! That sounds good. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound good, but it's a really good sign. That means I'm getting fuel. All right. Now we're going to cycle it until it doesn't make that sound anymore. We should be in business. Moment of truth. <laughs> All right. We are back in business. Ha. <sighs> I can't tell you how happy that makes me that this all worked out. We are back in business. Oh man, I can't tell you. I've been working on this for three days, had some hiccups, ran out of time, didn't want to work in the dark. Uh, I'm so happy that everything worked out. I'm so happy that I had to change my shirt. That's what I do. I fix stuff and I know things. Hopefully this video helps you out. If it did help you out, please give us a like and a follow, and I'd love to help you out on another project. Jared with Wonderfully Wander, see you next time.